What's up everybody, Destroyer here. Welcome back to our cast of the Rise of the Witch King Test 2.2 version 6. Today we have a 4v4 on the Wold to watch. So it should be a, hopefully a good match. I get the impression it was, so let's see who we got in this game today. We have our first player, Mako is the Dwarves, or Mako. I don't know how you say it. I say Mako, so I'm just going with that. And on the uh, side next to him we have May Shadow Axe. May Shadow Fax, just call him May Shadow Isengard. Their third teammate on the side is Practice as Goblins. Not sure, sure that is, but he's here for Practice. And we have Glaurung as Mordor as their final player on that side. On the opposing team, we have Bjorn as Elves. We have next to him, Yanwe as Mordor. And the third player is Romeo as the Dwarves. And we have the final player, last but not least, Jeep, as Men of the West. Alright, so we've got a Men, a Dwarf, a Mordor, and an Elf. So they all have different teams. We have a Dwarf, an Isengard, a Goblin, and a Mordor. So they all have different teams as well. There's no doubles on each side, so that's cool. And no, uh, no mirrors, it looks like, as well. So that's it. Good as well. Varied, varied game, which is good. Alright. Let's see what's going on here. Mako's going for a Hall of Warriors start with some Guardians. May Shadow's going for a Clan Setting start. So we'll be getting the Wild Men out. Practice going for Goblins. A goblin Cave. And we have Glaron going for Orcs. Double Orc hit there. Alright, uh, we have this player who is Jeep. Jeep is going for. Rohan Spearman has starting units. Probably going to creep this, uh, this war glare, I'd imagine, with those. He's also got some swordsmen. He's captured the outpost. That's good. And let's see. We got uh, Romeo going for the axe throwers. And he's also throwing down Hall of the King's men. So we'll be getting ranged and melee units. And Yamwe is going for work spam as well. Generally, most mortar players do. And Bjorn is going for two. Of the, uh, whatever they're called, barracks. <laughs> Which is not normal, to say the least. Usually you can't fund two right away, but maybe you can. He does have the outpost, so I guess it actually makes sense. And he's actually getting twice the amount of troops. Although he has to keep his farms up, or he won't be able to actually keep up with that production. Because of the command book cap, of course. But they do have a rally call on their troops. And Bjorn should be able to push Mako back here. Looks like his mine shaft was gotten rid of as well. Mako is now creeping this war glare, which will definitely help. A little bit of money for him. He's also got the outpost over here. Mishad is going for a second clan setting, so he's getting twice as many wildmen. He's going for a third clan setting as well. Interesting. And in practice going for a fissure, so he's going for Hatchel Swords and Goblin Warriors. Looks like he also controls the outpost on this side. Generally speaking, you'll have the second player, the one who's not in the front, controlling the outpost in most cases. Mako's case, not this case. Because Dwarves probably need the money more so, I just, I'd say. Than Aizen does. And of course, Elves need money more than Mordor does, so. It's, it's all dependent, mostly, on what you are, I suppose. Mm, we got Cav. Very nice. Cav could be very useful here. Especially against Mordor scum. So I think uh, I think that might pay off for Jeep. We'll see. Once he gets some out, of course. Looks like he's getting some right now. Oh, we have a forward mine with some Axors and Guardians out here. Oh, he just about kills that builder as well. Practice. That would have been very close. But Romeo's making a bit of a push here with his dwarves. Also bringing more reinforcements out and throwing up a statue. I like, generally, it's good play to place a statue where you're trying to, to camp. Dwarves' leadership are very hard to kill, so that'll definitely benefit him greatly. Alright, looks like Yamwe and his partner on this side, uh, Bjorn, are going for the double war chant on their armies, and then they're going to push on Mako here, who is all alone on this side. He does have his brand. Although he is in the front. There we go. He's got him back a bit. 
Now he's level 2, he can slam shot. Although he is taking a lot of damage. The orc archer is focusing him down and stuff with the elves. Mainly the elves, it looks like. And he does manage to get away, though. Mako might need some help here. But it looks like Mesha is actually going on the offensive with wild and torches. And going to torch the base of Eonway. Wild Moon torches giving him money as well as just absolutely ruining the economy and buildings of, uh... Of Eonway. Eonway might be in a lot of trouble now that Mei Shadow's gone full, uh... Wild Moon torch start. And it looks like the elves will pull back. He knows there's a big threat in his domain, so he is going back to uh, hopefully deal with that. And while practice has got himself half troll swordsman and goblin archers. Good combo there. Tanky front line troops that are very strong with archers that are alright, I guess. <laughs> but I mean, they're goblins, what do you expect? It could be worse. I'm not sure if goblins or orcs are worse. Archer was, I think. Goblin marches are better? I can't remember. But, I feel like they are. They also have the poison arrow shot, which is useful. Let's see how things are going over here. Yeah, you know, he is rebuilding, but he's still having to defend off against these wildmen. There's a level 5 battalion of wildmen right there. Looks like it will fall. They're not very tanky, unfortunately, to arrow fire, so. Not gonna last too long, but he has done a great deal of damage. But at what cost? I ask you, at what cost? At a very reasonable cost, actually. Wildmen are very cheap. It's just the forge, uh, the torch upgrades, really, they're expensive in comparison. Torch upgrades are 300. The wildman itself is 150. So that's more, mostly where all that money went. All right, we got ourselves a battle in front of the base of practice. I'm not sure if practice is a has a different name or not, because I've never heard the name Practice before, other than uh, that, the practice of practicing. But I've heard of all the other players, so perhaps he's going for a different name. Or maybe that's his name, I don't know. Looks like he's, uh, he's fending off, but only just. I should be. He should be just fine. Those arcs are actually theirs. I would not think they were. Of course they are. I have his ally, uh, Glarung, over here. Who is also fending off dwarves on this side. And Melowest is throwing forward things here and there. We've got troops in the center. From Eonway right there. Why do I always scroll? I can just literally click and be there in an instant. <laughs> I hate that. It's, it's a habit. I scroll too much. I hate it. But I do it anyway. Yanwei is going... Not Yanwei. Mako is going for a... Uh, a siege works, so he can get some battle wagons, probably. If he can macro them properly. He can, uh, micro, rather. He can do a great deal of damage to those uh, elves. Quite severely. Alright, the forces of the north are coming south here. Glaurong's on the defensive now, with his ally practice. It looks like Jeep has himself... King Theoden giving leadership to his army of swordsmen, almost exclusively swordsmen. He's going to fall back here. He does have a statue and a well, so that'll be a good staging ground for him. We have Men of Dale out for uh, this person whose name escapes me, Romeo. So Romeo's going for Men of Dale and Guardians and such, which is definitely good. Looks like Mako's up against a a Legolas. Legolas has potential to be very good against killing armies, especially dwarves who are very slow. He has plenty of time to pick them off, as you see there. And if he gets his uh, arrow wind, that's going to be really nasty for big armies, as that power is very, very killer. It's definitely a good choice for Bjorn as a, as a hero. Legolas is expensive and he's a bit fragile, but... Against dwarves, you don't really have to worry too much about getting into melee unless they get a Gimli leveled up to chase him down or something. Or Zealots, even. Zealots is a good counter to Legolas, I think. Because they're quick and they're very destructive. Many heroes in general are very good counters. Two strong archer heroes, I think. Sort of. Except for maybe the, uh. Lin not Linden, the. the elf one, Nolors. Perhaps not. <laughs> <laughs> like Black Riders and such. Dolomroth Knights, Dolomroth, those are good as well. 
Stuff like that. Alright. Practice seems to be fully surrounded here. Jeep's got the full surround. Or maybe he's surrounded. It's hard to say. <laughs> now he's surrounded. It's a bit of a mishmash. But I think practice should should win out there. He's got the buff, he's got the cave bats as well. And he's also throwing down the totem, I heard it. Which does mean Gorkil is out there, and indeed he is. So that's also helping quite a bit. Things on this side seem to be going alright. Ah, oh, we got Noldors. Very nice. Noldors are out in the field, and they will start wrecking May Shadows, a little Wildman, and his alerts. So he's going to get out of there. Same with Mako's King Brand. Mako's gone for Siege. He's gone for Catapults. Very nice. But to really make him effective, you want Flaming Shot, so I think that's what he's going to go for there. Because Flaming Shot is very, very good. There's a Tom Bombadil somewhere. I'm not sure where, though. Looks like Glarong has got himself a Morgamir, the Fill Beast. That should be very useful, as long as he's careful, because the Men of Dale will tear Morgamir apart. So, he's got to be real cautious. There's Tom Bombadil. <laughs> Making himself known immediately. This classic catch line, catchphrase, Bombadillo, as we all love. I think Glarung's in trouble. He does have some catapults, though, so it's going to make the Mandel a little less effective at camping. And the Felbis is picking up the road here, which is definitely a good call. Although a Lone Tower being thrown up, and Mandel going to be thrown into the Lone Tower. He's definitely not going to fight there. But practice is coming in for the flank. With a big amount of goblins. There's a border mirror in there as well. He could use the horn. And indeed he will. There it is. The army is frozen. Let's jump over here real quick, see what's going on. Looks like elves are camping on some elven wood there. While fighting the uh, dwarven stuff and ice and stuff. They're definitely going to need more. Wildman, not generally good to throw at the elves. It's got to be said. I'm sure Shadow knows that. <laughs> but he's doing it anyway. Well, the goblins lived through the horn and they seem to be doing quite well. He had a good amount of them with the catapult support of Mordor. He's doing quite nicely. Throw Marauders doing work. Petrol Swordsman as well in there. Level 5 ones there. And they're all buffed as well, which really helps. Although there's a little bit of friendly fire going on with the catapults. Something you gotta be a little bit careful of. But as long as practice and Glaron keep up the pressure, they should be able to push back their opponents. There's the Wildman Summon as well. That's gonna do some damage. So they should make some gains in this side, I think. This cave troll is actually doing work as well. Give credit where credit's due. Look at him go. Cube trolls are good to throw in addition to your army there. Mako seems to be up against Nordal Noldors. <laughs> Not Nurdles. I think that's Mako's. Yeah. He has summoned the Hobbits. He uses the Vile Galadriel, which may or may not have done much because of the statue. In the statue, you get spear uh, resistance, of course. If you weren't aware. Yeah, Mako's definitely going for the right choice with the catapults. Storm catapults are amazing against elves. Although he's going to be up against the attack trolls here very shortly. He needs more frontline troops if he's going to keep these catapults safe. Which May Shadow's trying to provide, but he's providing the wrong kind of troops, really. <laughs> I feel like Urukai, pikemen, or swordsmen would have been a much better choice to spam, I think. Obviously not as cost effective. To be much better at stopping something like attack trolls, which uh, wild men be completely useless against. Mako does have phalanxes though. Oh, Jeep seems to be in a bit of a pickle, and down goes his fort. <laughs> Shit. Good thing I looked over here. And they're pushing very aggressive. They got giants, they got catapults. Jeep beaconing first support, but it looks like it's a bit too late. He does still have a builder, but I don't think. Yeah. He is indeed going to get that builder out of there. Not going to give up quite yet. But definitely, uh, the catapults 
definitely the right choice. If you're up against a heavy archer faction, catapults are key. Especially if you're an evil team that has the ability to uh, get like Mordor catapults. Mordor catapults are great. Black Riders also are a good choice against Men of Dale and such. Black Riders have to ruin those Men of Dale. And the Men of Dale and the uh, Dorman Heroes as well. So that's a good choice. Ooh, we get Clorfindel. There we go. Barrage. Oh, look at this. No doors with weapons on our own. I see that every day. Usually they die before that. Cool indeed. There we go. He's got some pikes. There. He's got hordes and hordes of wild men. What is he doing? Unusual to say the least. Four clan settings in a rick pit. I mean, he could actually build a strong army, but he's opting not to. Especially since his economy is probably pretty good. I he's in it all. Using lumber mills. I don't think uh, the elves are going to be able to hold on too long. Bjorn is pretty much alone over here right now. Yamwe is, I think, on his way over to the right side to try and help stem the tide over here as the base of Jeep is basically gone there. So someone has to be diverted over here to try and help. That does leave the elves all alone to try and defend against two players. Lurch does get killed, though. And keep in mind, Meshad is sending trash at his enemy. There's a attack troll as well just to help clear up the wildman which would do pretty nicely. He should just really make armies of pikemen and put them on porcupine <laughs> or something. Would be a little bit more effective. Because they'll start tanking arrows nicely allowing the catapults to take a lot of shots and kills. Get kills rather. I love Dwarven catapults. They're so good. When you give them the fire upgrade they're just incredible. how good they are at killing things. Archers don't stand a chance against Dwarven craftsmanship. See, so yeah, I think uh, I think Bjorn's going to be in trouble here very shortly. Because without uh, without Yahweh's support, two on one is going to be very very difficult. Glorvan's got black riders. Oh, he did just charge them into a lot of dudes. A lot of those dudes being pikemen. I don't know if it's a good idea to keep him there. Oh, he lost his Black Riders. Unfortunate. He's also got Morgamir on the ground. Which is probably wise, considering all the arrow towers and such, right? So he's getting the benefit of Dread Visage from Morgamir. Mm, we got Drogoth the Dragon Lord coming out from practice. He's also got three... <laughs> Three level three uh, fixtures there. So that's good. There we go. My shadow's finally doing what he should be doing. <laughs> Just getting lots of pikes. The wildman idea is nice. If there were wildman's axe swords, probably would have been better than the wildman swords. At least they could have fired back, you know? It's not like these can tank any better than these, because they really can't. Unless you give them heavy armor, and even then, not, not much better. It was a good for a start unit though. Start spam. He actually did a lot of damage to that wildman spam start. Yeah, if your Bjorn's days are getting close to numbered here. As May Shadow and Mako push in. Although Yami is bringing back support over on this side. Sending orcs and tactrols and catapults and such. Will it be enough though? I'm not so sure. All doors are being focused down by catapult fire. We're tanking it well, though. No? Glorfinell is on the field as well, although if he's on a horseback, he's probably going to last too long. <laughs> uh, maybe, maybe so, because these attack rolls are ruining the pikemen. Holy crap. Yeah, it looks like Mako and, and that Mishadow might be pushed back here. The attack rolls is doing work. And the elves just picking off as much as possible. Alright, Romeo is here with uh, the support of Jeep. The remnants of Jeep, who is very much still strong. He's got armies. And he's got a base back here, so he's not dead by any means. He's also still got the outposts, and he's still got his farms. 
He just doesn't have the ability to use powers. That's the only thing. That's where, of course, the other teams do so. We bring swords from Lorien. Do you know? All right, let's see who has some powers here. Bjorn's got himself summoned allies. It's the best power he's got so far. Practice has Balrog and Darkness. Oh dear. So Balrog will be coming out soon. My Shadow doesn't really have much, actually. He's not getting much power points because all his troops are just dying. That's the problem. They're getting killed before they get to hit. <laughs> so he's just got industry, really. Mako's just back at his 25 point power. Which will be, uh. Citadel? I can't remember. God, I'm terrible at remembering these. We'll find out soon enough, I suppose. Citadel would be huge right here. We could just summon it under the catapults or something. Maybe it'll break those instantly. He just needs to swing once. Oh no, but the Balrog summon. Arguably. No, that was that was their team. Okay, I thought it was the northern one. It is Citadel. Okay, so we'll have a Citadel summon here very soon. I would summon it under these catapults, personally. Well, I guess you could summon it anywhere. That looks like he was thinking the same thing. Look at that! Called it. Oh dear. Romeo has. Not too much in the power point for him. He's got like towers and hobbits. It's just not good. Jeep obviously can't use his powers. And Eomwe doesn't have too much in the power point for him either. And Glarung is doing pretty well. He's got his worm. He's up to 15 almost. But yeah, we have a citadel here now and lots of Dwarven supremacy. <laughs> Dwarven siege. Supremacy, that is. Taking out the elves here. And once again, dwarves are better than elves. Everyone knows it. Ooh. What do you shoot on? <laughs> Just mighty cannibal right here. Oh, look at Legolas arrow winding the shit out of these guys. And Bjorn is down! Bjorn is defeated. Leaving Eonwe alone on his side. There's the Watcher. Doing work there. Ooh, right in front of the archer range as well. Oh, he's gonna eat a builder. I love when he eats builders. All right, Jeep's just about knocked out of the game here. It looks like. Oh, there goes. Everyone goes immediately. <laughs> All right, the southern team's victorious. Very cool. It was a pretty action-packed game. Very good indeed. So yeah, that was enjoyable. Hope you guys enjoyed that. And uh, of course, well played to all the players in the game. It was good. So, I will see you guys in the next cast of the Rise of Witch King, patch 2.2. See you all next time.